Bridging the Gap in Achievement by Chris Ahrens. Black and Hispanic students are less likely than white students to graduate from high school, earn a college degree, and get a well-paying job. Uh, the point of this presentation is to outline, unfortunately, why these disturbing facts are true with using some research to support these claims, but more importantly, to discuss what can be done to change things. As any educator should be focused on the narrowing the gap between all students, and that all students should have a fair opportunity to achieve their highest potential. The achievement gap, as an overview, is generally described as the gap between African American and Hispanic students compared to their white peers. Education Week has claimed that the achievement gap shows up in grades, standardized test scores, course selection, dropout rates, and college completion rates, among other success measures. So it was clear that this gap is multifaceted and really hits students from all sorts of avenues of their educational careers. Um, is, it was brought that white students have higher scores than black students on average in all standardized tests as assessments. The achievement gap is a very complex situation in which many variables are involved. Uh, there are not distinct causes of the achievement gap. However, there are numerous correlations. And through these, it appears that it is, it's, it's not the race that dictates a student's success. But most importantly, it is how the student is brought up in a culture, their values, socioeconomic statuses, and learning environment, which helps dictate the student's success. So students can absolutely be just as successful, an African-American student, a Hispanic student, and a white student to one another, but it is their, the environment where they learn which is the greatest impact on their education. And unfortunately, African-American and Hispanic populations are statistically more likely to be in these subgroups compared to their white peers with a, a poor population with socioeconomic difficulties. Um, and also the quality of the schools that these African-American and Hispanic students are brought into are really not on par with many of the white counterparts throughout the United States. So the leading correlation between a, uh, a student's success is in, ach in achievement is really the district as well as the student's socioeconomic status. Um, statistically, students who grow up in poverty-stricken areas score lower on standardized tests and have higher dropout rates. And this is true regardless of race. Um, students who are raised in these poor areas are not provided with the same resources in and outside of the classroom as many of their white peers growing up in more affluent areas. So as a child, before they even enter school, they are st statistically behind their white peers. Um, the, many of these students at home do not have the same resources as their white counterparts, such as um, educational books, computers, or other materials that they can begin reviewing as a child. So they're at a disadvantage before they even enter the door on day one of their education. And these na neighborhoods have a uh, statistically higher percentage of African American and Hispanic populations. Um, schools that are in these impoverished communities are not as well funded. A uh, Washington-based research and advocacy organization found that students in poverty and those who are members of racial minority groups are overwhelmingly concentrated in the lowest achieving schools. So there's a clear correlation between income and low achievement. Um, and these schools, they offer less rigorous work compared to schools in more affluent areas. Students are not being challenged or held to as high of a standard in these schools. Uh, they have limited after-school programs and resources. The enrichment programs, clubs, and other activities in the white affluent areas are really not even comparable to or even in existing in these impoverished areas. Other contributing factors could be peer pressure, and that there's often a social stigma for studying in that it's seen as uncool. So for that reason, some students in these low achieving areas really do not focus on their education. Student tracking can also contribute to the achievement gap in that once a student is placed in a, a lower level class, 
they stay on that track for the rest of their educational career and it's very hard to move between courses. So it's important that schools analyze and try to find ways to allow movement between courses. Um, negative stereotyping can also contribute to the achievement gap in that in some neighborhoods education is simply not valued or important. Test biases could also be contributing to the achievement gap, especially in standardized tests. And it's important that all standardized tests are fair for every student to take and that there should be no cultural biases within the tests. Um, in some neighborhoods, a culture of learning just does not exist in that it is, it is not valued. Parents are, themselves are not educated, and nor do they have time to focus on their education or their child's education. Um, frequently, in order to pay the bills, these students and parents are potentially both working jobs and that they simply do not have time to commit to their education in order to survive. To Annapolis, Maryland, where they raised achievement by raising expectations. At Annapolis High, this advanced placement psychology class is a clear picture of how much this school has changed. It has been a culture change, a true belief system that all kids can be successful. Principal Donald Lilly says when he took over nine years ago, Annapolis operated like two different schools in one building, where white students thrived and minority students failed. Decades ago, there were two segregated schools that merged in the 1960s, but the inequality never fully went away. My African-American ninth grade males had less, I'd say 73% had less than a two-point, three-point average. But today, it's changed. Now, 85% of blacks and 77% of Hispanics are passing math. Joshua Matt was pushed into tougher classes he went from a failing freshman to a college-bound senior. I have people that care about me, and I, the things I do right now, I do it for them. The, following is something the principal hired new teachers, offered classes year-round, and went one step further. Annapolis High invited community leaders into the building to connect with underachieving students in a way that had never happened before. Students meet every week with volunteer role models from the same troubled communities as the kids, changing perceptions of what's possible. You come here every week? Oh, every week. I probably come every other day. <laughs> Sometimes I'm here every day. Businessman Charles Duckett listens as much as he talks. I try to take all the wisdom I've been getting over the years and give it to them in a way they can understand it. Jasmine Makel gets it and now has a full scholarship to Emory University in Atlanta. From the outside looking in, there's people who don't think that we can do this and we have to prove them wrong, and I think that's what clicked. Annapolis High changed the culture of what the community expects of minority students. That changed the students and the school. Rahima Ellis, NBC News, Annapolis, Maryland. A uh, second principal who we're going to hear from today is Principal Carlos Hernandez. Uh, he works in Southern California as a school that is very heavily populated with a Hispanic population. Um, so he is a junior high principal and he pointed out that the Latino students at his school scored 100 points or less than their white counterparts on this year's California Academic Performance Index. And he believed that he believes that changes to the curriculum are going to help facilitate the growth in these students by building student skills. Um, so an increased rigor through the Common Core he believes will help narrow this gap. And he says, quote, we can prove to them that they have the skills in them internally to be successful. One of his main goals is to build the students' confidence in their own education and show that they have potential and they can achieve. So what can be done? Um, just like the previous principle, push to show that all students can achieve, um, that we should increase expectations for all students. Um, sometimes students have a self-fulfilling prophecy in which they don't believe they can achieve, and as a result, they don't achieve. So as we build confidence in these learners, we can show them that they can achieve. Um, we're gonna, we should encourage students to take honors and AP courses um, and discuss the future with all students. We want to promote students as lifelong learners, and it's not just a goal that they need to finish school, but that they need to continue to grow as students and promote their education for the rest of their life hopefully college and beyond. 
Uh, Principal Donald Lilly says that minority students weren't thinking about going to college because they weren't in classrooms where these discussions were occurring. So it's important that they're occurring with all students. Uh, there also needs to be a shift in the community. We need to involve parents in their child's education and having positive role models to change the perceptions. Principal Donald Lilly helped organize the Help Days, which were outlined in the previous video, where community role models came to the school and helped mentor students. Um, it's equally important that we offer education to the parents, such as GED programs or ELL programs. When, student, when parents take ownership of their own education, we'll see an increase in students also uh, worrying about their education. And as I previously mentioned, it's also important that we have fair testing without ethnic bias. Thank you very much.